Have you ever wished that you could speak to somebody who had left the insomnia struggle and ask them if there were any particular steps on that path of leaving insomnia land? Well, if so, I have the great privilege today to share exactly this with you. We have a letter from Hugo who has had a 23-year struggle with insomnia and he has described five steps that were really helpful for him to see. And again, I'm so glad to share this with you. And just a quick little backstory. Uh, I, I found this book on um, smoking cessation, Alan Carr's uh, Easy Way to Stop Smoking, thanks to a comment right here on YouTube. And I found it fascinating, super fascinating. And, and, and Alan Carr, who uh, stopped smoking after many, many years, said that the greatest thing for him was actually not the health benefits or saving money. It was leaving the mental prison, the freedom of not having to think about cigarettes all the time. That was the greatest thing for him. And so I went ahead and wrote, wrote a newsletter uh, almost a week ago on this topic, and Hugo replied. Interestingly, he had written an essay on this topic and just kind of forgot about it until my newsletter. So he sent it to me and asked, hey, can I share with this with our, our community? And he said, sure, go ahead. So again, that's a little quick little backstory. But with that said, let us uh, jump in here. And I'm just going to share the an email as it came to me uh, a few days ago um, from Hugo. And by the way, Hugo, a uh, longtime member of our community, he was actually one of the first four people who joined the Insomnia Immunity Program way back when it was called uh, Self-Coaching Master Program or something like that. And uh, he's been an incredible supporter. Thanks so much, Hugo. And I, I hope Hugo may answer some comments if you have one uh, to this uh, letter from, from him. But anyway, he titled it A High Price to Pay. Let's read it together. I have struggled with severe insomnia for the last 23 years. And if I can sum up the journey for me, it all came down to one thing. There can be a ton of reasons why you want to overcome your struggle, be it with insomnia or any other disorder. But in this article, I'm going to argue the point that there is only one true reason to become free of your struggle and one true reason that will really set you free, and that is the desire to be free. I can see five steps in my own recovery from insomnia. And Hugo says recovery, quote unquote, here. And I think the reason, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Hugo, is that when we say recovery, it can imply that there is some disease that we're recovering from, which of course there isn't. And I think that is uh, why he, he did that. Anyways, let's look at his five steps. Number one, seeing that insomnia is not a threat out there or even in here that I have to resolve, fight, analyze, or overcome. It is simply a prison of my own unconscious making, the bars of the prison being exactly everything that I do to overcome my sleeplessness. Step number two, now that I'm conscious of the prison, I start to feel the weight of it more and more. Precisely put, I start to feel just how unfree the prison makes me. It is like a noose around my neck. Step three, to the insomniac mind, there is now a dilemma, which in reality doesn't exist. I wish to be free, but it still seems like I have to give up my freedom that is, accept the prison in order to sleep again. Step number four. In this step, I dare to make the sacrifice. I would rather be free and sleepless than to spend one more minute in the prison. Step number five. I'm released from the prison and it turns out as a bonus, I'm also sleeping again. I'm not saying every insomniac will consciously go through these steps, but my point is that I believe that for people who truly become free from insomnia or any other mental struggle, at some level, the soul has chosen freedom over discomfort and pain. The soul has realized that being unfree is a higher price to pay than to accept pain and discomfort. And why is this? Because freedom is our deepest nature and being separate from what who we are is the deepest pain there is. In these five steps, we can see a natural law operating that to me is consoling. Whenever we choose unfreedom and to escape discomfort, suffering increases. When you're in the middle of it, it may seem like the suffering can increase in an almost unlimited way. But at some point in the journey, the suffering will reach such a peak that the soul will choose freedom. And why is 
it's helpful to know about your motivation to overcome your struggle because I think it can be helpful to understand that when you are trying to overcome or outgrow any mental struggle, you're really embark embarking on the deepest journey there is, the quest for freedom of your soul. This can give you a greater motivation and also serve as a guiding principle. Whenever there's a fork in the road, you can introspect and wonder which path is the one of escaping discomfort and which path leads to more freedom and the peace of my soul. With love, Hugo. When I read this just, just before a recording here, I was like struck by, you know, the how profound this letter was. Like I think often, you know, I think that we are not, you know, we, we are not teaching on the surface level. We don't talk about like surface behaviors much. We talk about like our thoughts and emotions, you know, it's a deeper level, but Hugo took it to like a really kind of profound level, like the deepest level. And if, if anything was sort of, um, you know, not clear here, I would say that Hugo summed it up so, so nicely in that very last sentence uh, or one of the last sentences where he said that on your path here, you know, knowing the above, you can introspect when you're finding yourself in a difficult moment and see this fork in the road. And there's kind of, you know, he describes two paths. One is the path of, um, uh, you know, fighting against discomfort and, and trying to escape discomfort. That's one path. And the other one is the path of freedom. And it can seem like, what, what are you talking about? Aren't they, aren't they the same? Isn't it like we want to get away from the discomfort and the struggle? Precisely. But what he was pointing out is the, the path of fighting against it, trying to avoid it, you know, getting away from it, making it stop. That is actually the path of more, more struggle, you know. And the, the, the path of freedom is actually the path of accepting, letting it be, et cetera, et cetera. So seeing this fork can really guide us to where we want to be. And, uh, you know, I'll, I would really encourage everyone to read this uh, or like listen to this, read this, whatever you can call it a few times and, and, uh, and, and take it in because I think there are some really deep, deep truths in this letter from Hugo, which I'm so grateful for. So I was going to thank, thank you so, so much for this. And um, uh, if you have questions, of course, leave them in the comment section and, uh, and maybe Hugo will reply uh, and uh, we will go from there. But that was all for today. Uh, look forward to having you back tomorrow and uh, hope you have a nice rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.